All right, boss. Hello, hello. Hey, y'all. Different, different setting. Same Tuesday. Is that what we should do? Like, uh, get t-shirts that are like, uh, you know, like uh, different islands, same shit, but it's like different transformation. <laughs> we, we have to work on the verbiage. I don't quite have it yet. It's, it's funny because I find myself in the last few uh, times, like, being in different locations for these yeah. and like different screens and da, 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 da. but um yeah always good to be with you guys here on our tuesday lives we're gonna tackle a topic today that i think is uh probably the paramount topic of of human existence uh especially <laughs> today uh we're gonna cover things like stress and anxiety so um why don't you just start by saying hi letting us know that you are here and that you can hear us okay. Um, also, if this is your first time here with us, just let us know this is your first time so we can uh, say a extra special warm welcome and hi to you. I know there are many people that have joined our uh, community here over the last few days, so we are going quite fast. Guy, by the way, is going to drop a link right now. Um, we use a a software called stream. And so if you guys are seeing yourself show up as Facebook user, that's because uh, you need to click on a link and it'll basically connect your uh, name from Facebook to the service. So then you don't show up as Facebook user. So do that. And that way we can actually know who you are. Um, hi, Leslie. Welcome. Great time. Uh, great to have you here. First time. Weirdly, yeah. weirdly enough, all my comments say Facebook user too. So I'm not sure why my stuff stopped working, but it's working for everybody else. I think I need to reset something on my end. No, I have to do it again also. I did too, but it still hasn't worked for me. I think I need to oh, like really? reset my permissions for some reason. Um, anyway, uh, real, real, yeah, go ahead, bro. Sorry. Yeah. So um, while you guys are doing that, uh, hey, Bobby, Bobby, welcome back. Um, I wanted to, since we're going to talk about stress and anxiety, and I know people are coming from a bunch of different places today. I'd love for you guys just to check in and get a baseline of where you're at before we start the conversation. So just kind of checking in things, life, work, friends, love, money, whatever, et cetera, like whatever you're present to right now. And just on a scale of one to 10, noticing your level of stress or anxiety right now. And then we're going to do, we're going to have a conversation about this and we're going to do an exercise around this. And then afterwards, we're going to check in again and see if in the short time that we're here together, uh, what you've been able to do as far as through the practice to actually reduce the level of stress and anxiety in your body at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Real, real quick before we uh, jump into the training, just if you're brand, brand new to the community, a few things to know. Uh, depending on whether you signed up with email or text, resources will be sent to you, uh, to your inbox or SMS. There's a sequence to those things and an order to them. I highly recommend at least the first two, three emails to uh, watch them in that order. And there's also an amazing resource there for you guys on a uh, active healing meditation that we highly recommend doing a 21 day practice round. Here and there, we'll do challenges in the group, but at the end of the day, you're the one benefiting from it so you might as well do a challenge on your own whenever uh the time is 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 good for you uh the best time is always now <laughs> and um you know having said that if you are someone who struggle with meditation never tried meditation before don't want, don't know how to quiet your mind we want to kind of just relax you a little bit and let you know that this meditation is not about any of those things this is a way how to go into higher states of consciousness how to use that to actually uh release and heal trauma from your own system. So how many of you guys with a yes or no uh, have or have not done this meditation? Just say in the comment box. 
or let us know, hit some likes or something like that, just let us know. Uh, and if you haven't done it yet, then we highly, 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 highly recommend that you uh, type meditation in the comment box below and someone from our team, either Jasmine, Tobias, Sarah, Corey, someone will reach out to you and uh, send you uh, information on how to get that that information, uh, sorry, that, that exact training. Because if you start going through that training, not only will you uh, psychologically understand the processes that Elon and I are talking about, which we can tell you is nice, but is really secondary, even tertiary to directly experiencing what we're talking about here. Uh, what we educate people on, especially if you're new and especially if you've been around the mindset development space, we certainly teach mindset too. We think it's an important fundamental uh, training and practice that everyone should have. However, trauma and the things that really stop people in life, the, the getting off the hamster wheel is not a thought process. This is a reconditioning, a retraining of your energetic body. It is a downregulation of your nervous system. And I don't know about you, but I've not met a lot of people in this world who walk around knowing how to downregulate, actively downregulating their nervous system so that their whole life feels like it's coming from a place of safety and well-being and groundedness. And really everything that Elon and I truly, truly care about is helping people recondition this energetic body so that they can have a completely different experience of the way that they live their life. And so if you take on that meditation practice, we guarantee you're going to see big changes in seven days. But they say, they say that you need 21 days to build a habit. And so that's why 21 days on that. And you're going to start seeing massive transformation in your life, whether you decide to do more of our advanced work or not, but at least it will give you a, a taste of exactly what we're talking about here. So you don't just understand it, but you're actually beginning to integrate it into your life. And then of course, like everything else, there is a, you know, advanced path, a path of mastery here. And that's really what we, uh, we offer elsewhere if you decide to continue doing work with Elon and myself in our community. Yeah. Um, and that's a really, really great point. It's, you know, and, and whatever your thing around meditation is, it works, it doesn't work. I'm trying to quiet the mind. We're going to talk a little bit about that today as well. Um, these are very, very, very different types of meditations. And so, give it a go. I was just talking to a, a prospect earlier today and she was saying that the meditations have like transformed her life um, because it gives you access to using an energy to heal and liberate certain aspects of yourself. Unlike anything that you've ever done before. I mean, people have done this meditation and just had a massive crying release or a massive like release from their body where they feel just energy and uh, an aliveness and space. You know, I don't know if you've ever had that, like whether it's like a massage or acupuncture or something, but someone kind of like releases something in your neck, but you've been living with it for so long that you just assume that this is what everybody goes through. And then you get that release and you're like, and they're like, how's that feel? And you're like, I've never felt that before. <laughs> and they're like, welcome to how the rest of us walk around. You just assume that that's how it is. Yeah. Uh, also, I just want to say, if you're watching this on the business page or on Telegram or Twitter or any other channels and you want to be part of the main conversation, the main conversation happens inside the Old Souls and Seekers Facebook group. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's transition to today's topic which I think, you know, is, uh, you tell, you guys tell me if I'm wrong is of interest to everybody and it's about stress and anxiety. Okay. Yeah. And it's like really like how to transform stress and anxiety. And obviously we are, we are living in very interesting times, right? Where there's just like a lot happening. I don't know about you guys, but it feels like we're in these times where there's like a major event on the planet, like every other day, like this used to feel like something that happened once a year. Now it feels like it happens consistently, right? Um, and of course, it looks like a lot of negative things are happening all over the world. And of course, that's what media likes to focus on because they're very good at hijacking our limbic systems and making us pay attention. And in the same token, I, I want to just offer you like Circles Iron, people I know, there's so much beauty happening in the world right alongside with that. People who really care and want to transform the planet and, and the society and governments and are doing incredible work all over the planet. We just don't have a lot of media that focuses on that. And if they did, we'd probably all feel a little bit different about the, the way the world is going. 
However, today's conversation is really predicated on something way more important. And it's that, you know, the quality of your life is not predicated really on what's happening out there. It's really predicated on how your inner experience is about what is happening out there. And we know plenty of people who live really effortless lives, very easygoing. And again, they're all living with the same circumstances as everybody else. So we want to start looking at why is it people like us and people who do our training can suddenly get into this modality of not reacting to what's happening, but really get their life to a place of responding to what's happening. And really, you want to, I'll say this earlier on, you usually say it later on in the process, but, you know, we want to start having this understanding and relationship that what we call reality, right, quote unquote reality, is this, it's really like a virtual reality set. It is an organic hologram that is responding, yes, to, to a degree to your thoughts and those kind of things, but it's really hard to rehabituate a thought. Like you, a lot of you guys, again, just say I in the chat box if, if you know this to be true about you and probably about everybody, is that we reenact and reloop in thoughts often. Like you go to bed and you know there's that thing that's incomplete in that relationship or something that happened at work or some way you feel about yourself and you kind of find yourself looping, 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 looping. Now you can go, please stop, I want to go to bed. And what does the brain do? It's like looping, 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 right? So that that command upward, like please stop, doesn't do anything. It just doesn't help at all. How many of you guys can can relate to that? Say I in the chat box. And and if you can, then you want to realize then maybe uh, putting a forceful consciousness on something that's looping in your system isn't stopping it. You you want to get curious about well, how can I relieve that? Okay. And that's what we really want to talk about. So again, we have the mindfulness practices that we mentioned before. Those are really important because if you don't understand what this is doing, what well, like and when I say this, I'm just pointing out what's between your left and your right ear, which is the brain. And we right now live very much in a world that has been conditioned and created by by the mind, right? So, but we don't have a world that has been uh, developed by the heart, if we want to say in that simple way. But there's so much more than just saying, oh, you got to live from your heart. It's like, that's that's beautiful, but kind of hokey because everyone's like, well, yeah, but how? And so that's what we want to understand is that your mind is like this. It's like the ultimate bouncer at a club. It is the ultimate protection device. It notices discomfort in your inner system and it wants to react to that. And so again, the news, when you're seeing media and so that leverages that, right? They show you something scary there's a, a response in the nervous system, like fear. And then the mind is like, okay, this is bad. Here's what we got to do about it. That's at media, but that's happening in our lives every day with our loving relationships. And honestly, the most important relationship you can have with yourself around money, uh, you know, around where you live, like opinions of different cultures and races and things of that nature. And so we cannot find peace in that state. And I'll say this, then I'll kind of hand it off to Elon. What we want to start looking at is that the mind is being reactive to a feeling, to a sensation that you're having inside of your body. And it doesn't matter how much willpower or mindfulness you place on yourself, although it's very important. It'll help you manage and cope your life certainly better and even stop the reenactment process. But what we want to do is we want to learn how to metabolize this sensation in the body okay so if we want to look at trauma when we're experiencing trauma really what trauma is is stuck energy in the body it's like there's a flow of energy like this experience that's happening and what we have been conditioned to do most of us have been conditioned to do is to stop the flow of that energy it gets hooked in the system it's actually like a freeze in our system the mind looks down and goes "Uh oh i don't like that and then it has a program that it runs that it tries to react to that situation in order to create safety again in the system however whatever program you have that has been installed you created that through some kind of conditioning very very early on in your life most of the time before you actually can remember when you did that which makes it even more challenging to meet it from like the the you know language therapy type of space and so there is a way where we don't have to figure that out anymore. We don't have to know why it happened, how it happened, whether mom did that or dad did that, or whether this trauma and at what time it happened. And while all that is, is, 
psychologically stimulating for some. Some people find that very painful. For other people, it's like, oh, that's interesting. I know stuff about myself. While that's psychologically interesting, it doesn't help remove this blockage. And so we want to look at, because if you want to, if you want to alleviate stress and anxiety in your life, you want to build a resilient energetic system, a fluid energetic system that when something hits your nervous system, something hits your energetic body, it comes in, you're with the experience and then it comes out because that's the natural state of a human being is that energy flows in and energy flows out through the conditioning that we have now kind of perpetrated on ourselves. The energy comes in and then it gets stuck. The energy comes in and gets stuck. The energy comes in and gets stuck. And then this is why you see a lot of your friends in their 30s and 40s that were holding it together that are suddenly having a midlife crisis because there's only so much that this system can contain, right? And then it gets too big. And what you're seeing is basically all the protection mechanisms coming undone, right? And it's because they haven't learned how to metabolize this energy. And it could be like 30 years of this like <gasps> experience, right? Imagine if you've had like asthma for 30 years, you've kind of like contained it and managed it, but eventually you're like, I don't have energy for this anymore. And the body starts like, kind of releasing it and it and a lot of people get overwhelmed because they start feeling things that they thought they never had to feel before and so what we want to learn through these practices and through this meditation that we mentioned early on is hey i need to have a practice and it's what we call like energetic cleansing or um what's the word i'm looking for here bro um energetic hygiene yeah, like energetic hygiene, like the same way you would take a bath or a shower every single day to clean your physical body. Guess what? You have an energetic body. And if it hasn't been cleansed in 30 or 40 years, you haven't done the work to get that hygiene. You're going to feel a lot of stress and anxiety in your life because there's too much stuck energy in the body. And so the mind is like on like overreacting to everything and every other little stimulus that hits that nervous system and makes it afraid. It's, it's just another peg, another peg, more pressure, more this, more that, more this. And I don't know about you, but it's very difficult to make choices in our life that are good for us when we're stuck in our fight or flight response. I want you to imagine like if you were out, trying to outrun a mountain lion and someone was like, like okay, uh, uh, now make a choice about your investments. Make a choice about what you're going to do with your life or your career, you know, or are you going to be in this relationship? But, and that is kind of what's happening to people. It's like their consciousness is all over the place trying to figure out how to create safety. And in the meantime, they still have to live their lives and make choices. In contrast, if you could metabolize that energy, bring the body to a more rested state, relax and make choices for yourself from that place, could you find that it would be easier or you would make better choices? And then last point here is, is that organic hologram, that thing we call reality, is actually in a relationship with your energy output from your body. And so stress, anxiety, flight or flight responses, upregulated nervous system, all this has a, a frequency. And this is not spiritual bullshit here. This is science fact I'm telling you, right? And so if we want to shift our experience, if we want to see reality reform itself in a new way, that reality is basically waiting for your frequency, your vibration, your output signal to change and it will meet it perfectly with whatever that signal is what we want to get curious about is how do i change that signal how do i change that frequency so right now just uh let me know in the comment box so i saw some of you guys already put the the scale of where you're at so now next phase is take a look in your body okay i'm just gonna instruct you have awareness move into your body and see if you can feel where there might be a constraint where there might be uh, a discomfort, something, maybe it's a squeeze, maybe it's a heaviness, maybe it's a poking or prodding. Just see if you can get more in tune with where in the body this stress or anxiety, I'm going to put that in quotes, this stress and anxiety lives. And just let me know in the comment box as we're kind of uh, investigating this together. And what I want to offer as you're doing that is stress and anxiety. And I'll read some out. So Sierra, welcome, by the way, Sierra. Sierra says, neck, shoulders, base of head. Excellent. Really, really beautiful awareness. Dan says, spleen and heart. Beautiful. Dana says, my throat. 
Tiffany, stomach, heart, head, throat. Really good. Throat, chest. Very nice, Leslie. Veronique, heart. Okay. Beautiful. Really, really great awareness and really, really great practice that you guys are able to notice that. Chest, shoulders, and neck. I don't know who that said that, but... Um, that was Kerry from Grand. Kerry. Okay, cool. Oh, Kerry, welcome. Um, now, here's what, what's actually happening, okay? You just witnessed that sensations with your awareness. Your mind is a super hyper vigilant tool and it is always trying to figure out what in your surroundings is scary or unsafe and what in your body it deems as not good i'm just going to label it that not even like now words like stress and anxiety are inventions of human mind you guys get that like Imagine you were a society or a culture that had no words such as stress and anxiety. And you needed to explain your experience to someone else. So notice how like in, in all the things that I read, right? There's people having things in their stomach, some in their heart, some in their shoulder, some in their chest, some like all over, right? But notice that we all call... All of those experiences have all fallen under stress and anxiety. I'm stressed. I'm anxious. Right. And then when you meet someone and you're like, they're like, how are you? I'm fine. No, no, no. Like, how are you really? You're like, you know what? I'm really stressed out. And they're like, me too. Meanwhile, your stress is a crazy amount of sensation in your stomach. Like, like, Stuff is just moving in there, like constant indigestion. And this other person that you're talking to, they're stressed out, but they have really, really tight neck. But you guys think you're talking about the same thing. Let that sink in for a second. Notice how two completely different sensations in two completely different places of the body, but we all label that stress and anxiety. Is this making sense? Are you guys with me as, as I'm just sharing this with you guys? Let me know in the comment box if, uh, if you're tracking this. So what we want to get really kind of down and dirty around is stress and anxiety is a nonsensical label created by, I'm not going to go down this whole rabbit hole, right? But created by people that want to send you a, sell you a bunch of shit to numb your stress and anxiety, right? Like if we can just label something, then we can go and create some sort of thing. And it could be anything from THC to CBD to prescription pills, to alcohol, to cigarettes, to workout routines, to meditation, to heal your stress. One big label that we're going to like try to knock out. But the truth is everyone's stress and everyone's anxiety is felt entirely different. So if we can get underneath that, right? Like let's remove this label because labels stop curiosity. If you label something like, oh, it's stress, then that's it. It's stress. And now all you're investigating is what is the thing that I can put in my body as quick as humanly possible to alleviate stress. And notice the phrasing, to alleviate stress. Is it to make stress go away? Is it to make stress disappear from my body forever? No, alleviate is like, I'm gonna put a Band-Aid on it for a little while so I can go about my day and perform and do the things that I need to do and not feel this thing that I have labeled stress, okay? Now what happens after you alleviate stress and it goes away for a while, maybe you took a, you know, you smoke, you drank, you ran, you exercised, you ate, you, you did whatever, right? Like we all have our, our various coping mechanisms, but what inevitably happens 
once the alleviation is gone, you know, in a matter of hours or the next day, what exactly? Sierra, thank you for being with me. Inevitably happen. It comes back. And isn't it true, you guys let me know in the comment box, isn't it true that it always comes back? Like, have you figured out some coping mechanism that has actually removed the sensation in your neck or removed the sensation in your head or removed the sensation in your heart or removed the sensation in your stomach? Right? So, yeah, it always comes back. So, um, again, I just want to make distinctions so we can kind of like talk about what's actually there, right? What most people look for, because we are very, um, <laughs> we want results immediately, right? Like we're, we're a, a human society that wants results yesterday. So what we're always looking for is the shortest path to alleviate the thing that we are dealing with. We're not actually looking for an actual path that can heal the cause, the root cause that is actually creating this problem. For example, people that suffer with like stomach issues, right? Indigestion, acid reflux, etc. What do most people do? They go to a doctor, they say, hey, I'm suffering from acid reflux. What does the doctor do? Does he ever have any sort of conversation about, well, let's take a look at where this acid reflux comes from? No. What do they do? They go, uh, yeah, take two of these once a day and you'll be good. Meaning I've just given you an internal Band-Aid that as long as you take this internal Band-Aid for the rest of your life, um, you will be just fine. Oh, did we mention that it has all sorts of other side effects? Oh, no, we're not going to talk about that. Let's just let's just help you with what you need. Versus if you went to like a functional medicine doctor who actually cared, right? Like this person is going to be like, okay, well, let's look at what you're eating. What's your diet? What's your exercise regimen? Have you noticed that maybe there's a certain time of day that this happens or certain activities that you're in that make this activate, right? And they get curious, right? Because we're not labeling, we're getting curious. All this to say this. If you got curious about the sensation in your heart, about the sensation in your stomach, about the sensation in your neck, about the sensation in your throat, and instead of having the mind, which has deemed all of those things, by the way, from the time you were very, very young as very dangerous and very, very bad, very uncomfortable, very bad. So mm -hmm. every time it even perks up just a bit, the mind looks down immediately and goes, nope, we can't have that. And then automatically takes you to whatever coping mechanism you have deemed works and you will continue to do that. Here's the best part. This sensation that got trapped inside, you know that, that phrase, what you resist persists, right? So if we resist something, like, like your throat is starting to, trying to talk to you, okay? It's trying to say something and you go, no, not now. Your heart is trying to communicate something with you and your mind goes, nope, not now. Your stomach is trying to communicate and you go, nope, not now. I would rather take the pill. I'd rather drink a glass of wine. I would rather take a hit. I'd rather do whatever and numb this thing so I don't have to feel it. If instead you gained tools that allowed you to actually sit with that sensation in a state of curiosity, not in a state of trying to make it go away, not in a state of trying to make it less or alleviate it in any way, shape or form, but just simply watching with a place, like from a place of curiosity, you will find that the most magical thing happen. Instead of the resistance, which has kept this thing locked in your body, you are now just witnessing. And where this thing just keeps moving and changing and shifting, right? Like the sensation 
keeps shifting and we're not going to label it overwhelm and we're not going to label it anxiety. We're just going to notice, oh, look, there's this bubbling in my stomach. There's a tightening in my throat. There's a little pinch in my heart. It's kind of like swirling in almost. I can notice it. And it's not even just in my heart. If I'm getting really curious, I can notice that it's kind of on the back right part of my heart. Oh, and look, now as I'm watching it go in the back right part of my heart, I can actually feel it almost move down into my solar plexus and my stomach. And you just keep watching. And energy, just like energy in life, wants to do one thing. It wants to keep moving. Emotion, energy in motion. It wants to move if you allow it. And the most wonderful thing happens when you allow energy to move. Can you guys guess what that is? What do you think is going to happen if you actually allow this energy without labeling, without trying to fix it, without trying to make it go away? What do you actually think would happen to that energy? This is like the, the Jeopardy part. Do, 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 do. Alistair says metabolizes. Yeah. So Alistair says metabolizes. We'll wait for, for a couple more. Um, and yes, whoever asked about acute emotional pain, yes, absolutely. And I, I don't know what that means. Could I use it for something else? But any any sensation in the body, like, yeah, so move out of your body, work through the body. Exactly. Now, we spoke about the root cause, right? So if when we were treating the label, we were taking the pill to alleviate it, which numbed it, and the thing always comes back, right? That's what we were saying. Now, if we actually allow the energy to move through, guess what happens? It disappears. It's gone. The root cause that has your mind look down and go, oh no, this can't happen. We got to fix this is gone. And guess what you're left with when the mind doesn't have to keep looking down and trying to sort out how to alleviate your stress all the time. Can you hear that little bit of peace and quiet up there? That part that doesn't need to con constantly fiddle and meddle and figure stuff out, it disappears when the root cause that had it activate in the first place is gone. And when you're thinking of like, I want to transform anxiety and stress, really, like, what are we talking about? Isn't that the ultimate goal? If I said to every single one of you, like, at the end of end, end, end of all of it, I think all of us would say like what I would love more in my life is moments of peace and calm. Those moments, you know, I spoke to my daughter um, about a conversation similar to this. She loves to write. She loves to write songs. She loves to draw and things like that. And then we were also talking about how active this gets when it's like trying to figure stuff out, right? And I said, when do you feel at most peace and at most calm? She said, when I'm writing or when I'm, when I'm writing, when I'm dancing or when I'm uh, doing art. And I was like, exactly. And you know what I realized? Every single one of us from the time we were so, so small, always looked for ways to find those quiet spaces. Like from the time that we were very, very young, we gravitated towards things, whether it was sports, art, literature, cooking, painting, sewing, whatever, because in those moments, we lost ourselves, We right? Like even knows the language, like I lost myself in there. Time disappears. The voice in your head disappears. This other voice comes online, right? That like is insightful and intuitive and beautiful and quiet. And all this, like we seek this out from a very, very young age. We just don't know how to get it. And this, like the work that we do here, I, I honestly don't give a shit to give you another management alleviation tool. I don't care. 
You know why? Because you'll come back or you won't come back because you'll be like, oh, I tried this other thing and it doesn't work. Just like you've done a million times before. We're interested in you actually being able to liberate these emotions, allow them to move through. Right? The only way out is through. And once they move through, you have that level of freedom, peace, ease. And from that place, you get to create something new. So how does that all land for everyone? How is that kind of landing as you let that kind of marinate on you and then check in even as you're kind of listening to that check in you know ha have i noticed even through this conversation before we've done the exercise like have i noticed any shift in my level of stress and anxiety right like what did i say i was at before even just getting these distinctions and kind of creating a little bit more of that space have you noticed a shift already? Go ahead, Broski. Yeah. And so the one only other thing I'd, I'd add to this, right? So we're, we're kind of exploring through ideas. And you know, when when you do our work, we're, we don't want you to explore ideas, we want you to have an, a direct experience. Okay. Uh, another word for that is just gnosis, right? We want to learn through gnosis, we want we want it to be ontological in nature, um, meaning that when you when you do work, it's not something you have to remember to apply in a certain situation. Uh, it's just there for you to do. And so we are not, you know, like habit forming is very difficult. Like how many of you guys have tried to change some kind of habit, you know, like something you know that is either not good for you or, or other people. Uh, maybe it's like anger or self-loathing or whatever it might be. Like you try to change it. You're like, oh, I'm going to do this habit thing. And like, you know, for a while you will power your way through it. And then it just kind of like fizzles out and you find yourself in these old habits. Like how many of you guys have, you know, had those kind of experiences. And so we want to get that, you know, the conditioning, like the patterns you're in, it's, it's, it's not your, first of all, it's not your fault that you're there. Okay. There's a lot of conditioning that happens to children based on some really old ideas. And then like everyone's kind of doing it. So it seems like the right thing to do. And, and it, it, it elicits a response of fear in our system that we're going to lose connection with people if we're not like what they want. Or like if you didn't appease mom and dad or get their praise or they told you you're good or something like that. It's like a loss of connection for a child and really for an adult too because nothing really changes between when we're children to adults is this fear of loss of connection actually feels like death in our system. And this should tell you something about human beings, this fear that arises. And again, think about a person in jail who they put in isolation. It's like the worst thing you can do to someone. Why? Because human beings are biologically built for connection. And so one of the things that very few, we've never found any teachers that teach this other than, you know, the little pockets that we've been in, is this understanding that the way humans relate in this world has kind of three, three levels, okay? And these levels are the way we relate to ourselves, Okay, so like myself, myself to myself, the way we relate to other people, like myself to a partner or to a business partner or to a friend, something like that. And then the way that friend or partner or a business partner relates to me. And then the way I relate to groups and the way those groups relate to me. Okay, and so what ends up happening for for everybody we've ever met, and you know, unless there's some aliens out there that are not experiencing this, is that there's trauma that happens at every level. It's like the trauma we do to ourselves, the trauma another that we perceive another doing to us, and then the trauma we experience at the level of group. Like we all have that story, right? When we were at school and we raised our hand and we thought we knew the answer. Like everyone laughs and you're like, I'm never going to raise my hand again. <laughs> you know, like treat yourself expression. Because I remember second and third grade when a teacher would ask a question, every little boy and every girl is like, me, me, really me. Like they're just shouting, trying to get our attention, right? And then like sixth grade rolls around, the teacher asks, so who has the answer? No one says a thing. And when you're in a room in front of adults presenting any idea, Elon and I will tell you this from personal experience. We've been in, in, we've trained thousands of people from stage. You ask a question, no one answers because everyone's waiting for someone else to answer, even though they might have the right answer because the fear 
of feeling the disappointment and shame in a group of people is so great that it will literally elicit a part of you that's worried about death. <laughs> no joke, biochemic biochemically, that's what's happening. And so it's like, holy shit, if that's what we're up against, the conditioning that you're in right now, the patterns that you're in right now, you have reenacted those patterns thousands of times, tens of thousands of times, maybe hundreds of thousands of times. You have a lot of practice and repetition in those patterns. And you know this because you're like, when you're in a relationship, you know, I say this, they say that. They respond this way, I respond that way. They're da 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 We do the dance. You kind of know how it's all going to go. Oh, they're going to leave me. And it's like, they leave you. And it's like, I told you they're going to leave me. And it's like, yes, but you were reenacting something. You've done it before. Of course, you know how this story ends. You've walked down that street before. You know what's at the end of it. And so reconditioning is not just, oh, I understand that I do that now. Let me stop doing that. I wish it was that simple for us. I really do. Because then we could just be like, stop that shit. And you would, you know, like you'd, you'd go have a six pack. You'd stop drinking. You'd go travel finally. You would go uh, take that risk and, and ask that person if they want to go on a date with you. Like whatever, whatever your edge is, right? So one of the practices that are critically important, and again, can't be learned through the mind, is this relational practice. And for those of you guys who are more in the therapy space and know these things, like there are these things called our attachment systems. And over the last 20 years, there's a lot of really good work around uh, these attachment systems. There's a great book out there called Attached for those of you guys who are interested in, in getting a little bit more information about it. But again, it doesn't help you resolve the way that this attachment system has been conditioned. So what we have found, and this is why we actually built our programs this way, is so that you get fundamental healing at every level. That's self to self, self to other, self to group, and vice versa. And what we have found is the more people do this kind of work, and when we say this kind of work from a scientific mind, you would say what we're helping people do is to learn how to actually downregulate their nervous system back to a place of safety and well-being so that that's actually where they sit all the time. Now, it doesn't mean that ruptures don't happen. doesn't mean that life doesn't keep moving and that you don't get afraid. It just means instead of it like being an all-encompassing experience, hijacking your brain, now reality looks scary. Now all the decisions you make are scary, right? You can actually let that energy move, come back to a neutral state and whew, back into well-being. And it happens very quickly. It could happen in minutes, hours. And again, we have all, practice, all sorts of practices that help you recondition this. And so one of the things that we have found is for healing to occur, I genuinely mean this, we actually need each other. Yes. We need, we need, we need the connection. Because if you're following what I'm saying, and say I if you are, and say I in the chat box if you're following this, is we are biologically built for connection. That means some of our healing, if not most of our healing, needs to happen in connection. Okay. And you got to call yourself out on this one, my, my little rogue warriors out there, because Elon and I were like this too. How many of you guys think that you're going to do all this work and heal yourself completely by yourself? You're going to read the books, you're going to do the courses, and you're going to show up this like nice, shiny, new human being who's going to like show up in the family and be like, look how transformed I am. Love me for my transformation. And if you tried this, by the way, oh, the disappointment. Yeah. When you come as a shiny new transformed being into a con environment that can't receive your transformation and they're like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about or they can't relate to you at all. And, and for those of you guys who have done that, you tell me how, how crushing is that inside, that, that disappointment that you feel when you're like, I just want mom and dad to see me as this new thing or like my partner to see me as this new thing. And they're just like, I don't know what you're talking about or they respond to you in a, in a harsh and negative way. And you're like, oh, I guess that didn't happen. I must have not been transformed. This is crushing, right? And so what we want to understand, there's two things, that, no, two things that need to happen here. The first is sitting with another person and templating a healthy nervous system is really important. Here's what I mean by that. Again, think about before you had language, if you have small children, you see this all the time, the way a child works in this world is not through language. They don't have it. And so there's another mechanism at play that we see all across the animal kingdom is that we have energetic signaling as part of our makeup and biology and the way that humans work. That's why when you walk into a crowd of people, you feel a certain way. Or when we are with a loved one, you feel a certain way. There's an energetic signaling that's happening back and forth, kind of like a, a read 
uh, and send signal from a computer, right? The, the signal going out and inbound and outbound signal all the time. Why would we do that in technology if we weren't doing that ourselves? So we're both sending and receiving signals all the time, okay? And we're getting feedback from our environment and then there is a energetic response. But most of us don't notice the energetic response. We just live in the stories that the mind is creating about that energetic response, which is not really what's happening. That's just how, how your mind deals with those little signals, right? Through, and so, it, through its process, right? Like in each person's mind is going to re receive that information differently because that's just the patterning that we created. That's right. You have basically a filtration system based on how you were conditioned, what you were told was good and bad and right or wrong and all the judgments you have about people and yourself and blah, 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 blah. And so everything is viewed through this filtration and lens. And that's why, of course, when we look out in the world and you see people uh, disagreeing about small or big things, of course they are. It's like they don't have the same conditioning. How, they, they literally are not living in the same reality. And then so we have this world where everyone's trying to grant reality. So that's never going to happen ever. We can continue to do that. I promise you we will see wars and arguments and all the things that we've seen for thousands of years now if we continue that model. In contrast, if you, if you feel into your system, it's like, what's actually going on here? What, what, is, what is this desire that I have to be seen, to be heard, right? This is at the mental level what we're talking about. And what's actually going on is there is an unmet need energetically speaking in your system like a piece of information that it's been looking for an experience that it's been looking for that it hasn't gotten okay partially the reason it hasn't gotten this is because no most human beings are not trained how to give it to each other okay this is what we call attunement right like think about a musical instrument it needs to be tuned if it's out of tune it sounds terrible humans also we have a vibrational like vibration and energetic attunement and so what we were looking for as children is we were looking for a certain not just mom and dad to be there and show up we were actually looking for a certain attunement for mom and dad how many of you guys can relate to this say i in the chat box like you wanted mom and dad to show up a certain way that's how we think about it underneath that is there was some kind of attunement like a like a way they would be present with you that would have really made a difference so what we want to, yeah, there we go. So I just want to get a little feedback from you guys. And so if you needed that as a child, you know, you came up to mom and dad, you're reaching out and you're crying, oh, ah, right? And mom and dad pick you up. I have a three and a half year old. We have to do this all the time. We, we hold him and there's a certain way we hold our energy and our, our presence in our body. And what is what the child is learning in that moment through this energetic signaling is how to downregulate their own nervous system. That's what's actually happening there. That, that's what coddling is for. You are literally transmitting your energetic template to your child. Again, uploading and downloading this information. And that matters way more than what you tell your child is that felt sense. Okay. And so what we do in our programs is we recreate these opportunities for what's called a reach and response. I'm reaching and I'm getting a response. I'm reaching and I'm getting a response. And when you reach and get a response from someone from this attunement, your system, your nervous system, your energetic body finally gets the data that it has been looking for probably for decades, thinking that I got to get it from mom and dad or from my spouse or whatever it is. And you, by the way, they may never give that to you. That's why a lot of us reenact our stuff with our mom and dad with our spouse because we're still trying to get that need met. And here's the thing. You don't have to get that need met with them. It's the same need you're trying to get met after you have a transformative experience and you're sharing yourself. You're like, please see me, finally see me. And they're like, I don't see you. And you're like, uh, 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 uh. you just get crushed. So I want you to imagine what it's like to be in a community because this is what we've designed here, what we've created here through our programs and experiences. When you start doing repetitions on a regular basis where when you reach, you actually get met and you get a response with attunement. Your system goes... Oh, there it is. Oh. And that energy can move through. Again, we need each other for healing. It's kind of amazing by design that it's designed this way for human beings to heal. And so if you do this repetitiously, and Elon and I are going to do a five-minute exercise with you right now, again, just for that fact, like if you come here, one of the reasons we sit with people in these meditations, you're like, why do they do these five-minute sits? Is so that you can get presence in a way that you've never gotten it before so that some aspect of you that's here right now can get this need met 
Okay. So before we do this med- before we do this little five minute sit with everybody, here's what I want to tell you. If you're listening to these conversations, you can certainly try to make sense of them and then be like, oh, I got this and I'll go do it in my life. And, and God bless you and good luck, right? We, we, Elon and I have invested 20 years and well over a million dollars of our, of our own funds to learn all sorts of these little things. And what we've done is we've really looked, we've stood back over the last few years and said, truly, what are the, what are the things that really make a difference for people? And this is why we had these Tuesday talks because what we talk about here is what makes a difference. Not doing a five-step process, not go uh, write in your notebook and rehabituate yourself. Like there, there's some evidence that that supports people. It's better than not doing anything, certainly, but it's not like the thing that gets in there and reconditions the inner system. And we don't wanna waste your time. And so if, if at some level you're like, this is interesting and I'm curious, that to me is enough for you to take a next step and at least do a reach out to our team to find out if this work is a good fit for you, okay? Now we want people who are invested in their transformation without a doubt, right? Like you come here, we're like, we're gonna, we hate to say this, like we can't guarantee anyone's transformation because we can't guarantee how you're gonna show up. And if you do this work, we guarantee your transformation, period, end of story. Like your life is gonna change radically, your relationships, your relationship to money, health, like everything is gonna get easier for you, okay? And we don't know the timeline of that. We don't know any of the other things because your timeline and your trauma and your experiences are different than everybody else's and your unique fingerprint, that's your own experience. What we ask is that you just show up and do the work. If you're ready for that conversation, just let us know. And the way that you can do that is just saying, contact me in the chat box below. Or if you're a go-getter, you can go to, hold on, I'm just trying to find this thing for you. You can go to callsatori.com. Here we go. And you can, you can uh, book your own call. You can actually book in. And this is a 15-minute uh, clarity call or discovery call with our team. There is literally no pressure to buy anything on this call. That's, again, by design because we don't want your nervous system to be in a high-tense state that you have to make a choice. We want you to be in an exploratory state, open to receiving some feedback, open to receiving some presence from our team. And that's what we train our team to do. So unless you're like, absolutely, I want to do this work. Please sign me up right now. We're not going to sell you anything on this call. Okay, it's just for you to feel into, understand how the programs are, get the information, and then you can make a decision as an adult. Hey, I want to have another call. I want to get those next steps. I want to figure out how I can make this work in my life. Okay, and so that's how it works. So you can either, again, just type in contact me like someone just did, or just go to callsatori.com and you can book yourself right in for the schedule uh, for a 15 minute call there with someone from our team. And I promise you they're incredible beings who deeply, deeply care about the quality of people's lives. They do this work every single day. We make sure, right? Like if we're gonna, if we teach it, the core of our company is very competent in this work, right? And so they're doing this this type of stuff all the time. Uh, with that said, I said, let's uh, finish this out with a quick sit and uh, then we'll send you guys on your way. So just again, right before we sit, just uh, taking note of where you are now uh, on that zero to 10 or one to 10 uh, stress levels. And then we're just going to sit for five minutes and see what happens when we leave that. And again, just noticing what new sensations or uh, new experiences are available to you. Broski, I'll I'll, uh, hold the time and you can go. I'm going to do a lead. Okay. So close your eyes. Just get comfy for a moment here. Again, we're just going to do a quick five, six minutes here. So closing your eyes. And it's always easiest to start by just focusing on the breath. And the reason we focus on breath is just to give the mind something to focus on amongst the many benefits of just breathing in general. And again, just noticing the the timber of this breath, meaning like as I breathe, maybe I'm noticing tension in my chest. Maybe the air is not even going down to my belly. Could I breathe a little deeper? And I want to invite you to not try to quiet anything down or even change your state. Meditation is not about changing your state. It's about being with the state that you're in. 
it's observing your state. It's not changing your state. This is where a lot of people get mixed up and don't get a lot of value from meditation. If your mind is loud, say your mind is loud. If your breath is restricted, say your breath is res restricted. If there's tension in your heart or your belly, so it is. That's that's where it's at right now. That's your moment. That's your present. And then somehow, some way, guide your awareness towards the space around your head. If you find this challenging, then just start by, by finding the space in front of your face. And then to the right of the head, and then behind the head, and then to the left side of the head. So you kind of are bringing your awareness almost like a, a halo around your head. I won't get into too much of the explanation of the biology of what's happening here. You can um, get that meditation and I get into all the details with you on that one. Okay. Right now it's just about the practice. Just exploring, just getting curious. And so see what effects finding that space around your head has. And you can, if you can, just kind of release the awareness so that it starts moving even farther away from quote unquote the head. And this can be just a few inches for some of you or for some of you, it's gonna feel like you're going uh, exploring the universe. So it can be very wide or very close. Neither one's better or worse, just exploring, bringing awareness outside of the mind. So you might start feeling that there's actually a, a like byproducts to bring your awareness here. Perhaps you start feeling more restful. People will use words like buoyant to explain this, spacious, empty. The void white some people start losing the awareness of their body it's like hard to find the edges of their body and so i really want to offer you finding an alternate state of consciousness is as easy as what you're doing now this is already an elevated state of consciousness and if you're doubting yourself let, let the doubt go if you're using effort to get here see if you can let go of the effort and just be in your experience, however it is. There's no right or wrong way to do this. We're just exploring. And then from here, see if you can turn back towards your body. So like maintaining this spacious awareness and then turning back towards the body and just noticing the center channel, the heart, the solar plexus, the stomach region, all the way down to the root. Check the throat. And what we're doing here is we're using subtle awareness to just check on the sensations within the body. Now the mind may have an opinion and that's okay about what it's looking at. And instead of trying to quiet the mind, just include what the mind is doing. Just include your mind. It's okay if it's chatty. Don't try to turn off the chat box. And again, all we're doing in this simple little practice is just getting curious about the sensations inside of our body. And then taking note of our experience as we do that. So just this is really a very small taste and just take another minute here, just noticing your experience. This is just the very beginning of beginning to work with our energetic system and learning how to downregulate 
And again, in the meditation that we offer, uh, you can still write meditation in the chat box. I go into great detail on how and why this works. So I want to thank you guys uh, for showing up today, for being the type of person who is curious and wanting to learn about these very, very important transformative processes that don't just uh, transform our lives, but can transform the lives of those around you. We really honor your uh, awareness and attention. We uh, value your curiosity. Thank you for being part of this community. Uh, we look forward to serving those of you guys who are interested in taking the next step. Please go ahead and uh, type contact me or book your call on callsatori.com so our team can uh, have a chat with you and see if we can serve you in a greater way. We love you, love you, love you very much, and we'll see you here next Tuesday. Bye, everybody. Everyone, let us know how your stress levels have dropped after that meditation. Yeah. Bye, y'all.